Hello and welcome to tonight's show. Welcome to another day in paradise. Welcome to yet another video about Costa Rica. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about your travels to this absolutely amazing, beautiful, breathtaking country. And we are going to categorize this into these different topics and going through them bit by bit. As you have already seen, this adventure is coming to an end. We already crossed the border towards Panama and that is where we're going to head over after the next video, which is about how much we spent for our Costa Rican trip, which was, disclaimer, 26 days long. So I guess I gathered quite some info that I want to share with you today. So without further ado, let's go and start. So as I already said, we spent a total of 26 days in Costa Rica and we spent two of those in San Jose in the beginning. Then we moved on to Nuevo Arenal where we spent four days and from there we head over to Monteverde, had one night there and then in Nosara on the peninsula we had two days to see the turtles and head over to Tacoles where we spent one day, then another day in Cuepos, then head back to San Jose where we spent five days in the surrounding area and explored everything that was around there. And then we headed over to the Caribbean side of the country, spent one day in Limon and from there we headed over to Tortuguero where we spent three days, had another two days in Cahuita and ended off with four days in Puerto Viejo. In the time we spent a lot of hours on the roads, but more about that later. So let's go. The first topic for today is going to be transportation and traffic. We uh, approached this from different angles. The first one was a rental car that we picked up in San Jose and we had that for about 12 days and it was $130 per day for the rental car. If you're looking into that, I would highly suggest to look for an off-road 4x4 truck or maybe just an SUV, but more something like that, because we had some situations where we would have needed it and we had some struggles with the car we had because it was just a normal car. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would highly suggest to check out the playlist at the end of this video, because there are some trouble related videos with the car. And these troubles are due mainly to the road conditions. Even on the main roads, they are in a better condition, I would say, but still there are giant potholes and every now and then you might bump into something that's blocking the way or uh, is way too steep or stuff like that. And as soon as you get off the main road, it will get way worse. And so we stumbled into situations where we had to turn around, take a detour, or where well, it was kind of sketchy to get out there alive, I guess. <laughs> so to avoid that, take a four x four and you will be better off. Another thing that we kind of learned on the way, because I'm, I'm not really good in learning from my mistakes, but maybe you can, don't trust Google Maps. Everybody there will tell you the same. I didn't really listen. That's why we bumped into these detour problems. And there is an app called Waze and that's supposed to be way better. But I didn't check it myself. That's just a tip I got from locals and other travelers. Another important thing that comes into play here is even when the roads or the distances don't look too far, better calculate more time because you might take a detour or you might be slower because of the potholes or you might just be caught in the rain and be unhappy or 
uncomfortable with driving fast and then you will be much slower. We had some occasions where that um, was the case and I was like driving really really slowly. The second option of transportation that we chose were taxis and Uber. Uber isn't really available in the country. We found it only in the San Jose area and if you use it it's cheap like everywhere but the taxi were also quite reasonable so that's quite a good option if you don't want to rent something and there is no bus. Speaking of which the bus there is the Mepe bus and there is the bus of the Caribbean or something like that and they will take you to a lot of places. We actually uh, took it in the end when we went from San Jose uh, towards the Caribbean coast. We did that with the Mepe bus. Quite easy, you just go to the terminal. People will tell you where to go, what to do. Sometimes it's a little confusing because you will be waiting around and not being sure if you are at the right place, but it will be fine. They will tell you if you're not and it's a really cheap option. You can get over big distances with it and it's chilled as well. When we arrived at the Caribbean Ocean, we went from Puerto Limon to Tortuguero and for that you have to, from Moin, actually not Puerto Limon, you gotta take the ferry and that was the best transportation I like ever had. So I really, really highly suggest to do that for that ferry alone. The ferry ride was like three hours for 90 kilometers. We saw so many animals and it was, it felt like driving through the Amazon and that was so cool. So do that for me an absolute must when you're there. If you follow my lead and do that, I will put the contact details of Victor in the description down below. And that's the guy we booked everything in and around Tortuguero with. And he had a driver whose name was Benjamin, Benjamin, and he drove us there. Really nice guy, a really good animal spotter. So if you contact Victor via this number, say hello from Leo, he might be happy about that as well. Next important topic is the food of Costa Rica and there is something special about it because in the morning you might be asked for gallo pinto which is like rice and beans. That sounds kind of lame but it was quite all right. I was a little surprised how good I found it and in the end I only ate that. And there is patacones which is like a roasted banana thing. I don't really know how to describe it but that was really really tasty and some places they had different sauces for it and that was delicious. And yeah then still they have like all those Central American stuff like burritos, nachos and stuff like that. For vegetarian options that was quite easy everywhere. Vegan was a little bit more difficult but if you use happy cow then you might end up finding something more or less everywhere. Especially in the more hip areas like Nosara or in uh, Cahuita, Puerto Viejo, um, you might find something very easily and in San Jose obviously as well. Topic number four are the accommodation. We spend an average of about $70 per night when you're looking for accommodations, depending on the region, you should be early, otherwise everything will be booked out, especially like on smaller locations like Tortuguero, there are not too many accommodations anyway, so you'd rather be safe than sorry, but in most places it was quite easy. And like in almost every places nowadays, you have a wide variety of hostels, hotels, Airbnbs, resorts, so you can choose whatever you like. In the more rural areas you might get more basic accommodations, but I think for an adventure that's quite alright. And you might find some gems like we found the tree house in Cahuita as well. Number five are the people 
and in my personal opinion and experience they were really helpful very friendly like i said victor organized everything in tortuguero for us he helped us with everything over there he spoke to the um, resort if we can extend for a night before we even got there so yeah that's the experience we had with a lot of people and i can highly recommend to get in touch with as many locals as possible and especially in tourism everybody was really punctual which i as a german really liked because we're quite known for that number six are beaches activities and highlights obviously the main highlight and the reason to get to costa rica are the animals the hikes the jungle feeling i think it's a third of costa rica is actually national parks and they really really care and look for the animals so you will find wildlife which is like wild and out and not in cages or stuff like that so animals hikes national parks and that's the main reasons to come to costa rica for me especially but also there are options to go surfing on both sides of the country and we skipped on that but you can go diving there are dive islands which are called the cocos islands but i'm going to talk about those in a minute around the monteverde area and further down south as well there's also a variety of zip lining options and all kinds of outdoor activity like driving around in a quad and stuff like that time now for your latest weather forecast and that brings us to number seven which is weather and climate so i'm going to put a climate chart over here for a better overview because i'm not willing to tell you about every single month just check out which one you might be going and if it's for you as you can see there are some months with heavy rains so be prepared for that we have been uh, to costa rica early in the year so there was close to no rain at all and when it rained it was just a short heavy rain and that was done so that was quite all right but also be prepared for temperature fluctuations when we drove up to the quetzal park we had about nine degrees down in the valley and when we were up in the cloud forest no the other way around <laughs> it was 29 degrees around 29 degrees in the valley and when we drove up into the cloud forest then it was like nine degrees and the thermometer was like just dropping as we were climbing up the hill with the car this time for point eight i can't really tell too much because it is snorkeling and diving and i skipped on it completely more about that in panama but before we went to costa rica i read about the cocos island it looks absolutely stunning and beautiful but it is quite far out so you have to take a live abroad and that is quite hefty it was like for a week i looked at eight to ten thousand dollars and i wasn't really willing to spend that dropping into number nine which is rapid fire questions so we are going to hit most valuable item sunscreen which style of clothes do you need hiking stuff for rain light clothes and beach clothes so be basically prepared for everything the item we missed the most was more sunscreen again because it is quite expensive over there the best place in my personal opinion is tortuguero and then there's cahuita and its national park mosara when you are in the right time for the turtles and we missed some national parks like Manuel Antonio and Corcovado. I guess they are quite nice as well, but I can't judge on that. The most overrated place was obviously Puerto Limon and we got out there really quick. But except from that, there wasn't really an overrated place. 
but I guess it also depends a little on your luck and skills to spot animals because some places might be quite disappointing if you can't find the animals. But if you are or willing to spend money on a guide, I guess you can't go wrong anywhere. The spoken language is Spanish obviously, but you will get around with English quite easily in most places. The local currency is the Colon and one US dollar transfers into 534 Colon by the time recording this video. So 1000 Colon is about $1.87. Who is Costa Rica for? Nature enthusiasts, obviously, you will be quite happy over there. Who is Costa Rica not for? For the couch potatoes, because you don't want to just sit around and do nothing. There are beach regions where you can chill out, but even there, there are jungles right around the corner. There are national parks right around the corner. There are places to snorkel at, so even there, you won't just chill, you are going to go out there. Guides, tours, or self-made. I personally prefer to do everything myself, but I guess there are also tours that you can book to go to different places. For guides, in my personal opinion, depending on where you are, you're better off if you start with a guide and then you get a feeling for, okay, where do I have to look for certain animals, when and how do I spot them. And if you get a feeling for that, you might be able to spot a lot by yourself. But still, in some places like Kawita, I was like, okay, there is a lot of different um, animals over here and I want to see them all and I will not be able to spot a lot of those without any help. So we got a guide and he found like a snake which was like this big and it was like 50 meters into the jungle and he spotted it and I was like okay I would never ever be able to spot that so it is worth the money in my opinion. Internet and phone, we got a SIM card again. It had five gigabyte of data for a month and we had really good connectivity like almost everywhere. In the middle of the jungle, you had your phone out and you had connectivity. So that was really, really worth it. And I always like to be more independent with it. And if you are get into areas where English is not that much spoken, it's easier to just translate a word or two or a whole sentence and use the phone for that. Last but not least is the safety and I felt really safe everywhere. I guess in San Jose there are actually areas where you have to be more cautious and where you have to act smart and <laughs> when you are stuck on the mountain you won't feel safe anyways but you shouldn't do that anyways. So yeah, apart from that, I felt safe and very welcomed everywhere in the country. And that's it for this video. If you have further questions, leave them down below. I'm really happy to answer them or at least try. Maybe you have some questions about how much we spent on the trip, how much Costa Rica costs. And good for you, this is what the next video is going to be about. So make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the video. Maybe hit the little bell as well, then you get a notification as soon as it comes online. Leave a like under this video if you found it helpful and also make sure to not miss out on the next adventure, which is going to be Panama and Panama has a lot to offer and I'm so pumped on exploring it and take you along with us. So see you in the next one. Until then, take care, have a great time. The last topic I completely forgot was Pura Vida. And Pura Vida, I used it in a couple of videos already, is a lifestyle, is a feeling and it's the poor life and that's especially on the Caribbean side I felt it more you get into this vibe and it's everything is just like beautiful life is good and the Ticas the Costa Rican they really embrace and celebrate it 
and you will be soaked into this feeling if you are in the country long enough so you should absolutely do that as well and tr try to just chillax and get into the vibe. Good night and thank you for watching. I want to see you in the next video. Pura vida. The next and per the next and very personal and very important topic is food and in the more rural area and and also make sure to not miss out on the next adventure